It's a brand new day, my friend. His masses are new every morning. Welcome to the Jam 316 Devotional Hour. So glad you're part of the fellowship today. Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's Psalms 117. It only has two verses. Beginning us off today as we celebrate Wednesday morning. Let's pray as we start off today. Heavenly Father, we are alive and well and grateful for the gift of life and for a brand new day. Your word reminds us that your masses are new every morning. That great is your faithfulness. Your word tells us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And this morning we are blessed because we are never alone. I want to thank you, Lord, for the time we can share together this morning. We don't take it for granted. I thank you for Family Media, for this platform, for this opportunity to be here, Lord Asante Sana. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in today, wherever they are, my Father, as we take the time to go through your word this morning. May they feel strengthened and encouraged, even as we begin the day with you. Thank you, Lord, for our pastors this week. May the wisdom of God continue to flow through them as we continue to talk about drifting. Abba Father, may we hear your voice through them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the needs presented before us today. My Father and my God, may you meet each and every one of us at our point of need, whether it is healing or provision, whether it is wisdom or direction, open doors and opportunities, whatever it is, my Father, I pray that you will minister to each and every one of us in the name of the Lord our God. Be magnified and be glorified. Receive all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We thank you and we thank you and we thank you in jesus name we pray and everybody said a good loud amen we serve an amazing god and this morning we can rest assured in his love and we can remain guaranteed that he is with us always never leaving us nor forsaking us are you drifting am i drifting that's what we're looking at this week and uh it's 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 a challenge it's been a challenge since monday for for all of us to be careful to take heed lest we fall, to take heed and remain standing. Our key verse, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? That's our key scripture this week. I was thinking about this, and we talked a bit about it, I think, yesterday. You know, drifting is not a shipwreck yet. And I think therein lies the deception. It's not yet a shipwreck. You assume you're okay. The writer of Hebrews tells us, as we said yesterday, he begins chapter 1 by talking about how in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son, and then he compares Jesus and the angels. And then here he's telling us, you know, for since the message spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, I thought of the Old Testament. Man, and the things that were happening in the Old Testament. The ground opening up and people being swallowed. People being taken into captivity. People being struck by leprosy. I mean, walking in disobedience, my goodness, the punishment was what? You wouldn't want to be on that side. And then he tells us, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? And you know what? We need to take heed. We need to pay the most careful attention to what we have heard that we may not drift away. Because if there was punishment in the Old Testament for drifting away, there's also punishment in this New Testament for those who drift away as well. Many times we hide under grace, 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 and we think that grace is, you know, the free license to do whatever it is we want to do, and we forget grace gives us the power to overcome sin. Are you drifting? Am I drifting? Today we'll be looking at the results of drifting, and like I said, the deception is drifting is not a shipwreck yet. But my friend, if we continue drifting, shipwreck is guaranteed. It is guaranteed. 
talk to me today, 20316 SMS line, WhatsApp number 0786-316-316. Let me know who you are, where you're tuned in from, what scripture you're anchored on today. Thank you for all the messages. Jackie Cheriro, you are tuned in from Langata, Psalms 46. One is your scripture today. We appreciate your company. Thank you so much for tuning in. And then Roy from China is on board today, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Thank you for tuning in, Roy. We appreciate your company. Diana, Abadia Ridgeways, Karibu Sana. John 17, 22 is your scripture. I've got Victor who's tuned in from Quare this morning. Jude chapter 1 and verse 2 is your scripture today. And then this one is coming in from Emily, listening in from Ruiru. You say Psalms 51 is your scripture for today. Alexi, Abadia Vihiga, good to hear from you today. Day. Some, uh, Proverbs 9 verse 10 and then Devon Dieki is also tuned in Matthew 6 33 Patricia in Kabete Shiro how are you doing today Proverbs 21 5 Dave in Loa Kabete Beatrice from Sotik Batha Kusimba always a blessing to know you're tuned in Psalms 23 and then we have uh, Faith in Zimmerman, Eunice in Maria Kani, Phyllis Ndongo from Saudi Arabia, always tuned in. We appreciate your company, Asante Sana. Kelvin from Umoja, Josephine in Nakuru. Gloria, all the way from Malawi. How are you doing today? Good to know you're tuned in. Trying to see if my guys from South Africa are listening in today. Mothoni from Qatar is on board. Mothoni, Karibu Sana. And uh, Joe and Margaret, our head ashes. <laughs> all the way from Nakuru this week. It's a double portion. We are having husband and wife team of Pastor Zimbi and Pastor Rita with us. How are you guys doing? Yay! We're doing good. <laughs> We're doing good. Doing good. <laughs> I'm cheering myself on here. Um, are you trying to encourage yourself to stay awake? <laughs> yes, amen. Jesus. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Take us back to yesterday. Remind us one or two things we covered yesterday before we get into today. All right, that's who? That's ladies first. Let, ladies okay. first. Mm. <laughs> I think what stood out for me was the story of Samson mm -hmm. and that uh, in the process of uh, living life and having been called of God, doing mighty things, that his story almost ended in failure when we talk about shipwreck. Mm -hmm. Almost ended in a disaster because he did not know when the Lord left him. Yes. You know, and uh, for, for me, it's a learning curve to know that when you're drifting, you do not know. Wow. So that stood out for me yesterday that I have to be careful, that I have to evaluate, that I have to look at the rhythms of life. What have I been doing? What oh. am I doing? Am I doing anything different? Mm -hmm. What has changed in my Christian life? And when you look oh. at these things, you'll be able to tell where you are at with the Lord. And I've heard this said over and over. When the Lord is far, ask yourself, who moved? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did me? Was it him? Yes. <laughs> because he changes not. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Well, for me, I, I yes. guess. Yes. For Keep me, going. I guess uh, some of the signs, uh, just the signs that you have drifted. Um, you know, when you lose your vision and your passion, when you, when, when uh, you, you have no uh, compassion, even for the lost. Mm -hmm. You know, those are great signs that you have actually drifted yeah. and left. Uh, the mark uh, um, where you were supposed to be and and you know it's it's not that you sometimes you don't drift alone but you drift with others as well with you you can easily take others with you mm -hmm. uh, because of the others that are watching the others that are behind you that are actually listening and you know they're following in your footsteps carefully yeah uh, and it's, it's great to just you know follow in the instructions uh, and in the ways of the Lord and staying put. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, things, uh, you, know you know, when you say that, uh, Pastor Nzimbi, I remember in my uh, in my early days of ministry, one of the things I I was taught is that as you become a leader, there are some things that are not necessarily sinful, but you will not do them mm. because you're leading people, and they may misinterpret they may look at it and misinterpret it as you giving them the leeway to go into the deep end you know i i i, I mean it, when when you have a place of leadership you you really have to be careful because it's like when you become a father 
you have to be careful because there are some little eyes that are always watching. Mm -hmm. And what you do, they will do and they will magnify. Yes. Yeah. So if you drift, my friend, they will become expert drift drifters. Yeah. How <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. we, we, we need to be careful. Ah, my people from South Africa are saying to sawa to up Andrew from Pretoria. Good to know you're listening in today. We appreciate your company. So today we, we move on from <laughs> drifting is not shipwreck yet. <laughs> Rita, yes. where do you want to begin us off as we talk about oh, the results? My goodness, I want to read a book. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. Crazy, crazy. It says, this is when they were being given the laws. This is what you should do. Yeah. I've taught you the laws of the law of the Lord, what he has commanded me. Then he says, verse 9, only be careful and watch yourselves closely mm. so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live teach them to your children and to their children after that that is scary yes meaning it's a matter of the heart mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and you might say oh you know i'm okay and i'm doing this thing. you know you might even drift and you're in church yeah. Drifting does not mean in fact, inside that you're away from the church. You might be the, there, but let me tell you, my friend, you're not with us. In fact, the best place to drift is in the church. Is inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. again, you look like you're doing the things that should be right. Mm -hmm. It says, let me tell you another one. Je let me read for you. Jeremiah 3.22. It says, return <laughs> faithless people. Yes. And I will cure you of backsliding. Let's wow. call it that it is. Backsliding, they say, is a lapse of your religion. It's a lapse of the things you used to do. Drifting can be equated to a form of backsliding. Mm -hmm. Let, let's call it as it is. Mm -hmm. You stop loving your Lord and you do not know when you stop. But it's a disease because it says, let me cure you. Wow. Hi. Let me cure you. <laughs> let me, because you have to guard your heart. Proverbs 3 says, Guard your heart above all else, because from out of it springs life, the issues of life. Mm. So it's, a, it's not about just the season, because you see, when we read in Deuteronomy, it says, let them not sleep from your heart as long as you live. This is a lifetime situation. Mm -hmm. And drifting, yes, we agreed, it can take you away from your church, you change location, you change many things. But the Lord says, even when you change, wherever season you are and whatever location you are, guard your heart. Do not forget what you have seen. Mm. Do not forget what your heart is remembering. So you have to look at your heart as the condition of your heart, even as we talk today. Wow. You know, yesterday, yesterday I was on social media. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I, I, I think, I, I, were you guys in service when I was sharing this? So I decided to join TikTok. Yeah? Mm. And, and, Kwani <laughs> Konini. <laughs> and so yesterday, yesterday I was browsing, I was browsing through, through TikTok. And I, I, I interacted with quite a bit of Christian content, but I also interacted with a lot of Christians who have drifted. Mm. And they're now trying to justify their kind of lifestyle. And I also saw a couple of people who were once in the faith, but now because God did not answer their prayers the way they wanted their prayers to be answered, this book is fake, this thing doesn't work, now I believe more in science. And I realized, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. if you are exactly what Pastor Rita has said, if you're not careful, if you're not deliberate, if you're not diligent to remind yourself of what you have seen yeah. and what you have heard, oh, I'm telling you, there's a lot out there that will confuse you if you're not anchored, that will mm -hmm. cause you to start, begin to doubt your faith and what you mm -hmm. heard, and it is so easy to just get lost yeah. Mm. Yeah. and to justify your lostness. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. It's scary. It's a, yeah. It's very yeah. scary. Um, it's uh, it's crazy that uh, that it's happening to the best of the believing saints, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and we go ahead to just justify. And uh, you know, I think one of the things that we looked at is not to uh, judge, yeah. <laughs> and we call it we we are we are told it's called judging. Yes. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I can take it up from there. Yeah. And, and, and and just read Ephesians chapter four, mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter four in response to what you just said, and I'm, I'm loving this morning devotions. In fact, I said I need to do a sermon series on on this drift. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians chapter four mm -hmm. it says this verse seventeen. So I tell you this, and insist on it. I I love when this emphasis mm. or embassies from where I come from. I, I tell you this and insist on it <laughs> on it, the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles mm. do in yeah. the futility of their thinking. Yeah. Verse eighteen it says they are darkened in their understanding mm -hmm. and separated from the life of God. Now, Paul is writing to Christians, to believers, to people in church, and, and, and telling them, do not live as the Gentiles have lived. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. And drifting is a beginning of a hardening of your heart. Wow. Wow. And your heart is at show, and, and you're your, your, your well-anchored, it's it's softened the things of God. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment you find yourself not uh, receptive to the word of God as you used, uh, you have drifted, and mm -hmm. and it, it causes a desensitization. That's 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 number one. Sin will cause desensitization uh, of of your heart to the things of God. There's there's just that, um, and then it will it will cause you to be deceived. Sin will cause you to be deceived and think that what you are actually doing and where you are at, where I am at, mm. is, is okay. Mm -hmm. um, where I am is okay. But in reality, you have drifted. Yes. You have left. Mm. You have not paid careful attention. It's not costing you. All you are is looking smart on the outside, but you're actually desensitized and deceived on the inside. Mm -hmm. you know? So sin will cause you to be desensitized. It will cause you to be deceived. It will cause you to, to, to move away from the things that you once valued and held on to so dearly. And listen to this verse 19, what it says. <laughs> Having lost all sensitivity, they wow. have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity. And they are full of greed. Wow. We can park and go home. <laughs> okay, we are home. <laughs> you know? And verse 20 says that, however, that, however, is not the way of life you learn. Mm. That is not where you are anchored. Mm. That is yes. not where you are supposed to be. Mm. That, however, is not the way of life you learned uh, mm. when you heard about Christ and you were taught in him and in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. That is not the true gospel. That is not where you started. That is not where yeah. you began as a Christian, as a believer. And, and, and I believe, you know, the whole of this week, we are addressing believers, people who are in Christ, people who are supposed to be in Christ. And it's very easy to slip away and justify the sin that we are doing because we have been desensitized. We have moved away from the truth of the gospel that we once believed. Wow. I love that scripture you, you, you shared, especially, uh, where is that? Verse 20. Mm. That however is not the way of life you learned. That however is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him. In accordance to the truth that is in Jesus. Mm. Christ in him. Jesus. Yes. And this is what I realized as well. Even as we talk about the church can be 
<laughs> the best place to drift. We have yeah. a lot of m mushy messages today. <laughs> yeah. Mushy <laughs> feel-good messages today that are more motivational, but they're not centered on Christ. Mm. Mm. You know, so you feel good, you know, you feel like, yes, I can do it, but they're not anchored in Christ. Christ's Christ has ceased to be the central focus of the message. It's no longer about him. And you can be in that space and not even realize it. Because Christ is no longer in the picture. But he's just mushy, mushy, feel good. Hallelujah, we can make it. But Christ is not featured anywhere. And we have to be anchored in him. The, 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 what we have heard, we have heard about him and in him. And we have to stay there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to add something to yeah. that, Rita? I yeah. can see you're in deep thought. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> As you're talking, I'm evaluating my life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it has become mushy mushy. <laughs> Because I'm thinking, what have I been speaking on the pulpit in the last few weeks? What are we saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And also just looking at what has happened in the last year, year and a half. Yes. You know, because I think that is when the body of Christ has been shaken. Yes. Mm. And this is when the true Christian has come out. And that question is so central to our motivation in, in life in the last few months. Yes. The decisions that we have made, have they been anchored in Christ? Mm -hmm. The decisions that we have made concerning our jobs. There are people, Jemo, who opted to end up living together, can we stay? Because oh, yeah. uh, now it's mm. too expensive, or mm. I'm feeling cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alone at home, I need somebody to yes. talk to, you know, we've been on lockdown. And really, it's, it's how you relate with your Lord that determines the decisions that we make, because it's out of your heart that these issues, that the decisions that you're making, and if you do not know the Lord, if you do not have the word of God in you, you know, we, we quote this verse so many times. Because your word have I hidden in my heart mm -hmm. that I may not sin against you. Yes. Mm. Why the word? Why Jesus? Because he is everything. Hebrews 1 says that he, he, is, that he sustains all things by his word. Yes. Jeremiah 1 says that he's watching over his word to fulfill it. John 1 says, in the beginning, was the word? Let me tell you, everything focuses on the word. Mm -hmm. So the less you have of it, the less you are reading it, the less you are having this rhythm of digging into his word, and the more you are looking at the things that are happening around you, then the issues of life begin to take place. You begin mm -hmm. to make decisions that are off based on your intellect, based on pressure from everybody, based on economics, sense does it make sense to me for me to live alone no let me get this guy and let us share cause share the room mm -hmm. you know we are just friends but we live together and soon we are more than friends friends with benefits and we have every other word to to give to justify our uh, moving away from the mm. word wow. and god sees the issues of life he says be careful what your heart it says be careful that you do not let what you have seen slip from mm -hmm. your heart slip Meaning wow. you forget and you begin to start making different decisions. It is dangerous, I'm telling you. And the day you wake up, you discover, who am I? Who am I? <laughs> you are <laughs> somebody else. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, as, as, as you were talking about that, the, 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 the cares of this world and the issues of life, and sometimes those issues of life are not necessarily evil things mm. yeah they're just they could be nice things but they're getting your attention away from the main thing and you cease to keep the main thing as the, the main, main thing. thing you know and we begin to pursue all manner of things and we forget that he said seek ye fast fast the first thing you uh -huh. seek is the kingdom of god mm. and the righteousness yeah. They are hey. And then these other mm. things, you don't have to seek them. They are the ones that mm -mm. will seek you. They will yes. be added. You keep seeking added. the kingdom. Oh, yeah, mm. but, but I think we've reversed it. We, we seek the things, and, and, mm. and once we have the things, then we think it is a confirmation that we have the kingdom of God. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I guess. I guess that's what. Uh, that's where the point where Jesus even uh, um, confronted the Pharisees yes. and told them, you clean the outside of the cup. Oh. But re in reality, the inside, you whitewashed tombs, Both. you know, and, and we need to get to a place where I think, I think even as pastors, we, 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 we can get to a place where we are even whitewashed tombs. Yeah. And, 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 and even John himself, John the Baptist, Go to a place where he even called them, you know, you brood of vipers. You know, <laughs> Kizazi Chanyoka. Hey. You know, in Kizazi, it even sounds even worse. You know, and and we 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 need to just uh, get to a place where we just confront some of these issues and not just you know glaze over them like mm. you said. You know, just give a good mushy mushy uh, inspirational talk and 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 share, but call sin a sin. You know, if it's sleeping around, you're sleeping around. You've drifted. Yeah. If it's uh, if you if you've gotten into into uh, sensuality and mm -hmm. all those things, I mean, these things are there. You know, the things that you watch, the things you listen to, wow. the things that you're exposing yourself to. Uh, it's it's no longer mushy mushy. You whitewashed tomb. You know. <laughs> you know the. You know. It, it, brood of vipers you know in the church i wish i wish i wish i wish i wish would get to a place where it's it's not about the offering it's not about you know it's not about who is dressed the best who is looking uh, i believe even the pharisees were the some of the best dressed people oh yeah re in reality, oh, on the inside, they were the most wicked of the wickedest you know and and we need to get to a place where we call it out um, and like I said yesterday, you know, being called out is not equals to being hated. Yeah. You know, we, we are really realigning you to the purposes of God. We are realigning you. We are bringing you back to where you are supposed to be, as opposed to throwing and casting the first stone. Wow. When we begin to do that, we, we, we first of all need to get to a place where we are not moved by numbers. And we don't attach mm -hmm. our success as pastors on numbers because... When you start calling people brood of vipers, eh, whitewashed yes. tombs, be white ready to have a congregation of 15 <laughs> instead of 15,000 or 1,500. I'm sure if Jesus was living in a day like this, he would always be on social media. Don't judge. Don't judge. How could he say, how could he call us whitewashed tombs? God is love. God can never call people something like that. Anyway, if you have any questions for us today, 20316 is the SMS line. And the WhatsApp number is 0786-316-316. Before we get back to our conversation, I have a Bible. I need to give out this morning. 20316 is my SMS line, and my WhatsApp number is 0786-316-316. I don't want to give it to you. I want to give it to you so that you give it to somebody else. So if you know somebody who truly needs a Bible, SMS me and let me know. Convince me that you know somebody that needs a Bible and I'll be able to get the Bible to you. Quite a number of responses coming in today. Phyllis from Saudi Arabia says, I like the way Pastor Rita is explaining the scripture. She must be a very good teacher. Oh yeah, we are mwalimu. Ata mimi amewai kunifunza. By the way, there's something you taught me, Rita, now that we talk about Mwalimo. Many, many years ago, I don't even know if you remember, uh, and, and, and you taught me this statement, you know, uh, before time is on time. On time is late. After time yes. is unacceptable. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. Don't even go there. And uh, I've shared that with many people, and it has set them free. But there's somebody I shared that with, and they quoted it in an interview because they went in for a job interview and it was late they kept her there for an hour and then finally they wow. took her into the interview room and she told them before we start i can i say something wow. and they said well, yeah fine say something and she said you know if i was your boss i'd suck all of you this is why before time is on time on time mm. is late after time is unthinkable i've been waiting for an hour she got the job <laughs> <laughs> Several other people responding and saying, what? This one says, this week the topic is truly undressing me. I don't know where the desire to keep anchored on God went to, uh, but I'm not in a bad place. I can strive to work back, so help me God. God will help you. Another one here says, hey, this topic is speaking to me. Indeed, we need a change. We need to repent. Thank you so much for that. 
And then uh, Paul says, I started ignoring simple instructions from parents and the, the drifting started. This made, uh, oh, this made me lose dignity in life. I love the conversation. Back to the conversation. Wow. What other thoughts are coming to mind even as we talk about this, Rita? Wow. I was listening to the song that you just played. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better. Yeah. Better than him. Mm -hmm. Graves into gardens. And one of the things that happens to you when you drift is sorrow. Let wow. me tell you, it's a sad place. You lose your joy. Let me tell you, you begin to have anxiety attacks, panic attacks. You get depression and we give you medicine, not realizing really <laughs> the root is that you left. Mm -hmm. Because... The enemy, John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. Yes. But it says that Jesus came that you might have life, and life abundantly. But because we have drifted, so life is not abundant, we think there are other reasons. Not realizing it's because we are the ones who made that decision to move away. It mm -hmm. is something that has happened to you, and therefore the consequences, listen, God is not mocked. What you sow, you reap. Yeah. So the moment you move away, you begin to experience things that you've never had before. Like it's not your portion to have panic attacks and to be anxious and to have depression. Those are some of the things. And I'm not saying there's no clinical uh, uh, reason for those. Mm -hmm. But for the Christian who has drifted away, these are some of the things that begin to happen to them. And they experience sorrow and you're wondering what is wrong. God has left me. But because you have moved away. So let me tell you, so one of the other things that you feel when you move away, you feel insecure because you begin to second guess. Yeah, huh. Am I with the Lord? Am I not with the Lord? John 15 says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. Do nothing. So you begin to get ineffective. Oh. And you wonder, oh, well, the things that I used to do, I can't do them anymore. I like that song. The things I used to do, I cannot do. <laughs> mm. I cannot do them anymore. So you begin to, yeah, my husband is doing like this. Maybe that's not the right song. But still. So. No. <laughs> I was answering like an Indian. <laughs> like an Indian. <laughs> so <laughs> you, begin, you begin to become ineffective. Mm -hmm. You begin to, something begins to wane. That's the right word. It begins to wane. Your job, your passion, things that are happening to you. Secondly, you become inconsistent. Uh -huh. You say, I will come. You don't come. You sleep. You know, you say, I will be there at nine. You're no longer there at nine. I'll be there for four hours. You leave early. It's the truth because it says, Titus 1, 16 says, they claim to know God, but their actions deny him. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I know God, but my action says the opposite. Yes. You know. Another thing, you begin to become insincere. Oh. Matthew 15, 8 says, They honor me with their lips, but their, but their hearts, hearts are far from me. Wow. Again, we come back to their heart. So you honor God with your mouth because you have learned the jargon. You know the Christianese. You know how to say, Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Amen. Jesus yeah. is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But really, he left. He left. He left. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. But denying the power, power there. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I'm just wondering, Pastor Z, mm. uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the Pharisees and how they had this, you know, we, we the peoples, God. we are the ones who know God. I'm wondering, can that also be another, another result of, of drifting away especially if you you haven't drifted away into the deep sea now you've gone back to the world like we have seen some people doing you know they just flip completely you're still within church circles but you've drifted away and you become so judgmental you know always thinking you're better off than others especially if you've been saved for long mm -hmm. yeah or even or even getting to a place where you, you i mean you're just um, you. You point. Uh, you think that the other maybe the other church is not. Mm -hmm. Those ones are not. Uh, they're not uh, in oh. the world. Oh, okay? Our Jehovah Vizuri. Our Jehovah Vizuri. <laughs> or maybe you know you, you don't. You, you're thinking, man. These other people don't pray for an hour. You know the mm -hmm. way I do. 
you know, or you're, you're probably judging based on you know, how they understand the word, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, and you're judging based on how the length of your salvation. There are people who have been saved for, you know, 20, 30 years, but, you know, their fruit is not showing. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's not evident. It's not evident what, uh, they, what they have been doing. Mm -hmm. in their salvation mm -hmm. you know because the fruit will always show you know uh, and 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 it's very easy to become uh, the whitewash tomb and the judgmental one and the one who points at fingers and saying you know you you need to you need to be you need to be like me mm -hmm. you need to be like me and and not like those other ones uh, out there so you know but but really um like my wife, uh, Rita, said, you know, you, you begin to distance yourself. Yes. And the moment you, you disconnect and distance yourself, then it's an indicator of, of uh, something that has gone bad. And, and sin will cause you to disconnect. Mm -hmm. Sin will cause you to, to disassociate yourself with even the family of believers. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment uh, you're, you're thinking, man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not just, I'm not just, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's not that I don't want to come for Bible study, you know, but I think everyone there is a hypocrite uh, as opposed to, you know, calling it out and saying, you know, this and this is happening. But you begin to distance and disconnect yourself. And sin will do exactly that, you know, but, you know, at the end of it all, you know what sin will do? Sin will destroy. Mm. Sin will <clears throat> shatter you. Sin will will cause you to that drifting will destroy uh, the very essence of God in your life in terms of just the deposit of the word. You know, if, if you sit uh, somewhere where people are just speaking to you, speaking to you, speaking into your life, and where you are consuming the word consistently, and where you're staying accountable, you know, um, and I don't know whether I'm getting ahead of myself, and, and, and you sit um, in a place where you are listening carefully, paying careful attention. Then, you know, uh, you know, like, like, um, like, uh, it's, it's, it's what the scripture says and talks about uh, Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. God told Cain that sin is lying at the door. Yeah. And he's seeking to master you. You know, it's right there. It's, it's about to take a foothold of your life. And the moment you allow, what you allow, you eventually accept. Mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes we allow so much and we, we want to say, you know, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exactly backslidden, but, you know, this thing is not very bad. Mm -hmm. You know, the music is not so, it, it, it's neither here nor there. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, it's not a bad, it's not a very bad movie. You know, they just removed clothes once twice thrice uh you know uh you know it's it, it's things like those and you get desensitized mm -hmm. you know but what you allow you eventually accept um and i don't know maybe maybe allow me to read uh first corinthians uh, chapter 10 mm -hmm. uh, verse 6 and it talks about just the children of israel it begins by talking about how the children of israel all moved uh, from one place to the other and you know, they all ate the same food. They were under the same cloud. Uh -huh. you know, uh, and they, they, they drank the same uh, drink. And, and it says in verse 6, now, now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Verse 7 says, do not be idolaters. As some of them were, you know, and, and some of them got, you know, they were under the same cloud. They were under the same instruction yes. from God, yet they, they, some of them decided to come up with an idol, you know, and out came a golden calf, wow. you know, um, and, and do not be idolaters. And some of, as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. And all these people were moving as one nation, mm -hmm. as one body of the Lord. And they saw the miracles and they saw the greatness of God. Yet, amongst them, there were some who had already drifted. They did not believe any longer in this God 
we should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And I mean, and this season angered Moses. It angered the Lord. And, you know, we should not commit a sexual immorality. And some of them, uh, some of them did. And uh, in one day, 23,000 of them died. Wow. We should not test wow. Christ. We should not test Christ. Mm. You know, it says 23. In one day, 23,000 of them died. Wow. We should not test Christ. As some of them did and were killed by snakes and do not grumble as some of them did and were killed and destroyed uh, killed by uh, the destroying angel these things happened to them as examples verse 11 and were written down as warnings for us mm -hmm. on whom the culmination of the ages has to come so if you think and i finish with 12 so if you think that you are standing firm Wow. Be careful that you do not fall. Wow. If you think that you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall uh, uh, because no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. Mm. If you think you're standing, be careful that you do not fall. Wow. <laughs> Hey? Shipwreck. Shipwreck. Right shipwreck. Right shipwreck. There. Yeah, shipwreck <laughs> has happened right there. Man, that yeah. is that is some food for thought. There's a question coming in here. Somebody is asking, how do you deal with somebody who's drifting away? How do you, you know, this person has gone back to drinking. They still come to church. You can see they're drifting away. How do you help them? How do you deal with them? So I think one of the things to do as a best friend, as a good friend, as a Christian, is to call it out. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be, um, I can't remember the verse in the Bible, but it says that one of the things for you to be a good minister of the gospel is when you call out the things that are wrong. I need to find that verse. Mm -hmm. it need, you need to call out the things that are wrong. Then Jesus will say you've been a good minister. Meaning as a Christian, one of those things, we have to say the things that, as they are. You have to say, hey, brother, I know we have many verses, iron sharpens iron, you are your brother's keeper. Yes. So you cannot be silent. Because the problem with, with being silent as somebody else is drifting is that you might end up drifting with them. Oh. If you do not say it. Yeah. <laughs> and you begin to accept and say, okay, that's their life, you know. You do you. I really don't like that statement. You do you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you cannot do you. Yeah. We do Christ. We do Christ. This is the way we go. We follow Christ. Yes. We don't follow what we think <laughs> should be the way. So you have to rise up because the Lord will ask you, where is, my, where is Abel? What Ooh. happened to him? The Lord will ask you because you are your brother's keeper. So you have to sit down. You have to, you have to say, okay, let, what is happening? This is what I'm seeing. It is your responsibility. So I'll say, be bold, be courageous, sit down, pray before that, ask the Lord. Give. That's true. Give me the yeah. word in grace. It says, be gracious. You know, call out the truth in grace, you know, and be able to point it out. Be courageous. Mm -hmm. God is with you. Yes. That's why he put you there. Very, very true. And Pastor Nzimbi, what about that person who's listening to us today? And uh, they recognize, that is me. I am not asking for a friend. I have a friend. No, 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 no. It is <laughs> me. I recognize, from, yes, I recognize from what we are talking about this week that I am in the deep sea and I don't know how to swim and I don't know what to do. What would you advise that person to do? How do they come back to the faith? How do you come back to the faith is... Uh... I don't know whether we are getting ahead of ourselves, but um, just acknowledge, number one, acknowledge that you are wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we don't do very easily is to say sorry. We don't acknowledge. We don't, we, I, I don't know whether it's a bringing or it's a human nature mm. that really resists the acknowledging that I am drifting, that I'm actually uh, not where I am supposed to be. And I would love to you know, I would love to be uh, forgiven. I would love to be uh, accepted. Uh, I would like to be reconnected mm. back to Christ. You know, and, and it's it's not necessarily you have left the faith. You yeah. not have left the faith. 
you may still be a, a believer, but you're not a strong believer mm -hmm. as you are supposed to, and your fruit is showing otherwise. You know, um, so acknowledge the mistakes that you have done. Acknowledge that there is actually wrong uh, that has happened in your life, mm -hmm. and then uh, return to Christ and uh, and and get yourself uh, someone who will actually uh, keep you accountable and hold you. Uh, every step of the way uh, as you walk the Christian walk. Awesome. So it's, it's never too late. It's yeah. never, you're, you're never too far. You acknowledge you've drifted, uh, yeah. begin to steam back to where you are supposed to be and we stay with staying within the boundaries of where Christ wants you to be. And just ask the Lord and repent and pray that the Lord would restore you mm -hmm. and God is faithful. Yes. God is so faithful. God is so loving. It's a scripture that we take so grant for so uh, so for granted, you know. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave uh, His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Shipwreck doesn't have to happen to you. Um, you should not perish, mm. but have everlasting. Life. Awesome, I love Amen. that. Rita, take some time and pray Amen. with us as we finish. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace, thanking you so much that even as we come and believe in Jesus, then we have life and life abundantly. That, Lord, we can come before you and, and you wash us clean. I pray for everyone who's feeling that they're drifting. God, I ask that you draw them back in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you heal them, as you've said, that you heal us of backsliding, that you heal them, Lord. I thank you even as you say that you shall, you are the restorer of our souls, that mm. you'd restore our hearts. You'd restore who we are in Christ Jesus, that we may come and know you, O oh God, even as Philippians says, oh, that we may know you, that we may have a deep understanding of your grace, of your love. I pray, O oh God, that you would come. I plead the blood of Jesus upon everyone who, who is drifting, who is feeling lost, who is feeling alone, who's feeling that I've been cut off from what I know. Lord, I ask Jehovah that you visit them by your power. You visit them by your grace. You visit them, Lord, in who you are, oh God. Let them realize that you are there with them. Because you said in Matthew, you will never leave us, nor forsake us. I thank you, Lord, again, you say in Psalms 139 that you know us. Oh, Lord, you have known us. Oh, God, you've searched us and you know us. You know when we sit, when we rise, when we walk. You know our thoughts from afar. We are not lost. We do not have a God who does not know who we are. We don't have a God who does not sense our pain. We have a very present God. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run to it and they are safe. So today we run to the name of the Lord. We run to the strong tower in the name of Jesus and declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we declare that greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. So Lord, I pray that you'd encompass your children, that those who have called the name of Jesus will not be lost. That those who have called on the name of Jesus will know that you're a God who is present who's available, who's able, who's more than able. Like you told, uh, um, you told Abraham in Genesis, you said, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. I am your buckler. I'm your exceedingly great reward. That we claim for everyone, Lord Jesus, that you are our shield. You are our buckler. You are our great reward. And Lord, so I pray, I encompass everyone who has called on the name of Jesus. And I declare that they are rising today. They are rising today that, Lord, that which you have put in them, O oh God, is rising, O oh God. And they are getting saved, Jehovah, away from the works of Satan. And I thank you, Lord, that we call on you and you answer. I thank you, Lord, even as you said in Psalm 34, that this poor man cried and the Lord had and delivered him out of all his troubles. I claim that verse for everyone who's listening and even for us, oh God, that you continue to be our God and our guide. And we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Wow. Thank you yeah. so much, guys, for sharing with us today. That's indeed a challenge. Ata mimi ni mejieka kwa ratili. You know, am I, am I, am I interacting with the word of God because it's part of my job or am I interacting with the word of God because I truly yeah. want to connect with him? Those are good yeah. questions yeah. to ask. We'll connect again tomorrow. Thank you for being a part of Jam 316. In the coming hour, Tunangia Clinic. Today is Wednesday. We have Financial Clinic. Today we talk about side hassles. Stick with me as we prepare for that.
For this and more of our shows, log on to www.familymediaonline.com to enjoy a wide variety of programs from current affairs to testimonials and features, pastoral and inspirational shows, kids entertainment and so much more. Also stream live on www.familymedia.tv.